Eric Wainaina is with us here in studio. And Eric Wainaina captured many hearts after the 2007 post-election violence with his song Daima Mkenya. And he is here with us in studio, having remixed the new version of the song. Thank you so much for joining us on Weekend Express. Good to be here, Michelle. Thank you very much. So let's begin with your inspiration for that song. Because um, like it was when it was playing, I told you, this song gets me every time and I'm sure it's for every Kenyan because you feel such a sense of identity when you listen to it. What was your inspiration for this well, song? Well actually you know first of all a lot of people don't know the song was I actually wrote it in 1998. 1998. And so there'd been a string. So it's been there for 10 years before we heard it. Yeah it had been it had been um, and it had been it had been used after the bomb went off at uh, the, uh, the American Embassy and had been used at different sort of flashpoints mm -hmm. but the inspiration for it sort of came uh, after many years of sort of um, sort of political violence starting from 1992 when we first went back to multi-party democracy and then when we saw what happened in, in Rwanda in 94 I, at that time I was a student at Daystar right. and I remember getting to school and and seeing all these Rwandese students hearing this news and breaking into tears and uh, so these, these, th these things sort of live inside you someone said to me actually the idea for the song first came when someone said to me, write a song for Harambe Stars. Uh -huh. This was in 1997, we were qualifying for the uh, Africa Cup of Nations. And then I started to do that, but I felt there was a much bigger thing to talk about because of what Kenya was going through in Africa at large. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. What was the response that you got after the first song, um, the first song after the post-election violence, rather? A lot of response came in. Did you feel some sort of responsibility there on? Did you even expect it? I did not expect it at all, you know. I think it, it's a good testament to if you write something very honestly, you write something from a, from a position of uh, art always speaks very clearly right. to people's hearts and minds, you know. And so I had no idea what was going to happen. Like I say, someone suggested this song to me and said, write, write a song for Rambe stars, mm -hmm. you know. And then, uh, um, and it's, uh, so you, 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 you respond and, and you write a thing and you hope that people are going to latch on to it. And they did, and I'm very and, thankful you know, it, for that. It literally became almost second to the national anthem. I mean, well, if I could say so myself. But why remix it now? Because that's a new video that we just played, um, you know, some twists to that song. Why now? Well, right now, because we are 70 days or more uh, uh, to, to the, to the election. elections, uh -huh. and uh, I always feel it's, I, I want to participate in the political conversation without going into politics. Right. At the end of the day, I'm an artist, and that's what I'm going to be for the rest of my life. Uh -huh. uh, but we've also got a new record coming out, uh, a new album, and I wanted to sort of uh, preface that by, by sort of, you know, um, sort of uh, because we're in such a volatile time, to talk about this very important thing to us, mm -hmm. which is peace. Which is very important. What impact have you seen it have um, or, or on Kenyans in terms of, especially the youth, in terms of making sure that they're not used as tools of violence? You know, Michelle, it's interesting. I've, I've, when you play a song in a concert and people know the chorus, that's okay. Right. But when people know the verses, and even verse two, the know, entire song, the entire song. just know the, the first line that, of verse one and the chorus exactly, in Jordan. Exactly, exactly. That's, that's a big moment. And I remember, I think we were playing a, a show at, um, in Babadogo at a, at, a, at, a, at a school there, and then kids, this was, at, I'm talking about, I think, 2009, 2010, uh -huh. and these kids knew the, the, and I'm talking about sort of seven-year-olds, you know, who knew the song from beginning to end. I mean, that was, what, seven, eight years ago? Uh -huh. Now they're just about at voting age, you know? Right. And hopefully you feel that uh, that message has continued to, to live in their hearts. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I mean, that's, that's a great reward, I would say, for an artist. But let's speak about this uh, new record that you're putting out and this song being a precursor. Um, are we expecting a record full of peace songs or it is a jumble in there? It's, there's not a political song in sight on the new record. Mm -hmm. Um, I feel like I've, I've said, other than this peace message for now, I feel I've, I've addressed a lot of social justice messaging, you know, and I feel in a, in a sense I've said what I want to say about mm -hmm. that. Um, so this record is a very personal record. It's a very introspective record. At the end of the day, it's a record about love. It's a, lef a record about passion. It's a record about destruction and restoration. Mm -hmm. you know? I've been through a lot, you know, um, and uh, I've, I've, I've come out on top, you know. Uh, me and my wife I, uh, and, and, uh, and my family were in a wonderful place, you know. And so I just wanted to write a record that would reflect 
all the things that 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 mm -hmm. I and that we have been through. Right, and hopefully uh, we can take a look at one or two songs later on, um, but still focusing, of course, on the more important issues of peace and social justice. Like you mentioned, you've done peace, but you've also done social justice or injustice, mm -hmm. uh, so to speak. And this speaks out uh, to Kenyans, but also to our politicians in terms of mm -hmm. the issues that Kenyans want to deal with. But you're doing it from a very different platform, mm -hmm. and that is peace. And many might think it's not as it doesn't have as much of an impact mm -hmm. as actually being a political leader talking about these things. But what impact have you seen those had? Because um, other than Daima, there's so many um, songs about the economy you've had. Mm -hmm, uh, mm -hmm. Just your impact there. Well, I feel that as artists, there's one, there, there's several ways we can go. You know, As an artist, you can go into politics, and some artists have done that. Mm -hmm. That, for me, is not the answer. Um, uh, personally, you know, I've been asked many times, will you run, will you run? In fact, I, I got asked this time as well. Oh, you really? Know? Uh -huh. um, but it's, it's, at the end of the day, I feel that artists have a particular role to play in sort of reflecting society, whether it's in, it's in political criticism or whether it's satire, uh -huh. you know, uh -huh. uh, what Gado and Mado are doing right. is, is very important. What Ridiculous did back in the day, that was very, very important, you know. Um, and so I, I, I feel that, that through art we're able to turn the looking glass at people and make them sort of see and, and laugh at themselves or, or feel proud of themselves, mm -hmm. you know, in some way. And you see the impact that the artistic community has had around the world. But it's, n it's, it's never an easy battle, you know? I mean, even in the U.S., which continues to have this uh, thriving, even comedy, um, I mean, when you see people like Trevor Noah right, or you see people right. like um, Stephen Night Colbert, Live. you know, and Saturday Night Live, despite that, they still chose Trump, mm -hmm. you know? Um, but it, because it's a continuing fight, you know? You need to continue to make people look at themselves and laugh at themselves mm -hmm. or, 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 or praise themselves. Right, absolutely. I mean, I, I have to commend you uh, for the fact that uh, the song, uh, the Daima song, came out about uh, eight years ago. And like you mentioned, the, the children who were singing along word by word are now of voting age. And that, yeah. that message must have gotten through. But let's focus now on artists um, who've delved into politics. We've had the likes of Jaguar, um, and not just musicians. You had KJ. Uh, very long ago, we had Kennedy Mungare get into politics. Uh, do you think the message is received with as much seriousness coming from an artist background? Well, I think it can be, you know. Um, I've, I've had this conversation a lot of times with them, and uh, I, I, I feel that, that the arts is a very strong way of, of bringing about change. Uh -huh. It doesn't put you in parliament necessarily if you're, an, if you're, a, if you're a comedian and you stick to that, you know. Uh, but when you, when you commit to being in parliament, you're committing to reading those bills, reading those and, 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 and enact them into law. Right. So you're no longer a comedian or you're no longer a singer, you know? Um, and so there's a, there's, there's, there's a limit to how much effectiveness you can have coming from that, coming from your artistic mm -hmm. background. Mm -hmm. That being said, there are a lot of artists who have gone into politics and have succeeded. Ronald Reagan being an example, right. you know? Uh, there's the, the president of Madagascar who was a DJ, <laughs> you know? And so there's, I don't know whether there's any one way. And so I just, I would want to say to KJ, I'd want to say to any other artist, I want to say to Jaguar, mm -hmm. just do your thing. Right. Do your thing. Do your thing. Yeah. All right. And of course, like you mentioned, you're not a politician and you, do, you don't want to delve into politics, but you still want to give this message out to the Kenyans. And you've been doing this for quite a while. Um, like, and we're dealing right now with IBC receiving nomination papers. We're going to have eight presidential candidates. So there's many options for Kenyans in terms of, choosing somebody who will deliver what they want sin. Your message, especially to young Kenyans, will make up the majority of the voting populations and how to go about this. What my message would be? Oh my goodness, my message is avoid choosing leaders who have been implicated in corruption uh -huh. in any way, shape or form. Let them clear their names first and then vote for them, right. you know? Uh -huh. um, avoid and I mean, it's easy. sometimes I, I ask myself, it's easy for me to say these things, you know. Um, I'm doing fairly well in life, you know. Um, I'm not, I'm not, when someone, if someone came and offered me a thousand bob to vote for them, I wouldn't, you know. But there are those who would but, take but it because there are those it's a lot of money would, for them. Because it's a lot of money. Um, and so in, in the theory of it is, don't take the money and, and, and vote for this person who is buying your future for a thousand right, so bob. We, but we, it's we only... stick to the kula kwa huyu kura kwa yule. 
<laughs> it could because uh, <laughs> clearly um, the, the voter bribery thing seems to be very deep rooted in, into our, um, our political system. But let's focus now as we wind up, Eric, on this uh, new record that you have out. Um, the Daima song is a great precursor. Thank what you. is the album called um, and when is it officially going to be launched? The album is called Brand New Day. Uh -huh. Uh, officially launching, that's a good question. We're sort of going single by single. The album is complete, uh -huh. right? Um, but How many of, songs are there? There are 12. Uh -huh. um, uh, and uh, the, one of the songs that, were, that, that I was hoping would play today is called Can We Fly Away Together, which is this wonderful love song. Uh, and like, like the title says, can we fly away together? You know, it's, it's, it's a, a, a ceiling of a couple's sort of love and relationship and wanting to escape, as it were, to... To that, to that romantic space, uh -huh, right? Uh -huh. um, but one of the other songs that I'm really, really excited about is a song called Usinizike, which is his working title right now. Um, uh, a, a gentleman from the 70s and 80s called John Zenze, who sang a couple of twist songs back then, he, he, he called me the other day and we were playing this concert and he said, Bona si jaito kwa isho, usinizike ni kiwabado uhai. Uh -huh. And I said to him, Bona Zenze, among other things, We've got to write a song with that in the title. Uh -huh. And so uh, we wrote that song, and it, it's, it's, it's an epic song. It's a collaboration as well with a singer called Kendin Konge and with Blinky Bill. Uh -huh. um, and so just look forward to it. It's, 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 I think it's prob probably my best work so Absolutely. far. Absolutely. Great. And uh, hopefully we can have you back on the show as you debut your other songs. But for okay. now, many thanks for debuting your new uh, remix for the song Daima. Thank you so much. That is Eric Wainaina.